안녕하십니까? 3번에 위치한 서울 삼성 치과 전진 원장입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. j e o n j i n I'm with Seoul Samsung Dental Office located in Sanbon. It is my pleasure to see you all through this dental TV online. Today, I'm going to talk about considerations to design prosthetic occlusion for ideal implants, contents, early concepts of occlusion that is still valid today, nephology versus PMS system, how they approach to restore natural teeth, Lastly, I'm going to talk about occlusion for implant prosthesis. 조합의... Early concepts of occlusion. As you can see in this diagram, this shows how occlusal theories have been developed and evolved. I believe if you understand the philosophy and the background of occlusal theories, you would broaden your perspective for your daily treatment. These are the ages. At the beginning, they were focused on making dentures after extraction. So bilateral balance occlusal theory came up to stabilize the dentures. Since 1920, natural dentition crowns began to be fabricated to apply bilateral balance occlusion to natural dentition. But restoring natural dentition with bilateral balanced occlusion had some problems. So as a solution to that, anterior guidance and canine guidance appeared for occlusion. Today, as many implant restorations are used, more implant-oriented occlusions are added. Now, let's look at early theories briefly. On will reported that distance from the incisal edges of the lower incisors to each condyle is 4 inches. Distance between the condyles is 4 inches. 10 cm triangle is formed if you connect the condyles in lower incisor. Following the author, the triangle is named the bone wheel triangle. It talked about bilateral balanced occlusion and teeth need to be in contact not only in the central relation but in others. Buck will said there is on average 26 degrees between bone wheel triangle and occlusal plane. During lateral jaw movement, the translating condyle moved medially. Spee said that occlusal plane of the teeth followed a curve in the sagittal plane and that is the famous curve of speed. The steeper the condyle path in protrusive, the more pronounced would be the compensating. The steeper the jaw moving forward the condyle path, the steeper the compensating curve. Now, the spherical theory by Monson appears, the four-inch sphere. It is the combined concepts of a bone wheel's triangle, Von Spee's compensating curve and Buckwheel angle, and Christensen phenomenon, which says when lower condyle moves forward, posterior teeth disclude. When Monson's spherical theory was announced, this was in the paper. When we talk about occlusal plane, this is the image associated with it. Curve of Spee is the sagittal plane of monsoon sphere, and the curve of Wilson is the frontal section of monsoon sphere. Most wax technique was introduced first to dentistry in 1907. Only in the 1920s, cast crown became popular. So, the popularization of natural teeth restoration has only a hundred years of history. At the beginning, in the early days of occlusal concepts, they were focused on stabilizing dentures. With cast crowns, age of denture gave way to the age of natural tooth restorations. The two main schools, Nethology versus PMS, Nethology was founded by Professor McCollum of UCLA in 1926. They said, just like denture fabrication process when there is no reference point in the oral cavity, for natural teeth restoration, the condyles were the determinants of occlusal schemes. 
So they did a lot of study on three-dimensional movements of condyle and how they can be reproduced on an articulator. The ethology school said if the rotational centers in the condyles could be located and if the border movements of these rotational centers were recorded and reproduced on a sophisticated three-dimensional articulator, then all functional motions of a patient could also be reproduced by that instrument. And a side shift of the condyle would greatly affect cuspal position. So the nephology school began to introduce and develop a pentagraph to record in detail the position and movements of the condyles and articulators to reproduce them. The early concept and sequence of treatment of nephology is as follows. First, establishing the rotational centers of the condyles via a hinge axis location, two, recording the three-dimensional envelope of motion of the condyles, three, maximum intercuspation of the teeth when the condyles are in their hinge position in CR, so the CO is achieved. The terms are changed a little bit, but it said when condyles are in centric relation in CR, CO, the centric occlusion, is ideal, so that is named CRO. He also said bilateral balanced occlusion should be achieved with eccentric jaw movements. The Lithology Society developed their theories in the West Coast. In the far away in the East Coast, the PMS school appeared. There was a huge distance between them. Culturally, they were different, so different theories appeared. Penkiman system, it is the combination of Monson's sphere theory and Meyer's functionally generated path technique for natural tooth restoration. Still, Penkiman system argued for bilateral balance and eccentric movements. The Meyer's functionally generated path is as follows. It is also called the chewing technique. The technique is used in the mouth of a patient, and it is the same as direct temporary crown fabrication. On a tooth to be restored, soft wax is placed, and the patient is instructed to do MI or habitual bite eccentric movement to come up with the occlusal surface. It does not require a complicated articulator. Technique, first, um, restoring the mandible posterior occlusion to a 4-inch sphere, and then using the maxillary anterior teeth as guide, the maxillary posterior occlusion is fabricated using the Myers functionally generated path technique. Roderick occlusal plane analyzer, PMS school, used this for full mouth restoration. This process is finding the center of the sphere using Monsoon's 4-inch sphere. If the center of the sphere is found reversely, the occlusal plane can be made. Later, Schuyler joined the Pankiman group leading to PMS school. Schuyler said in natural teeth, bilateral balance occlusion does not exist. The theory is only applicable for restoration supported by soft tissue, and he emphasized incisal guidance. In 1960, Nathology School also acknowledged the problems with bilateral balanced occlusion. Angelo D'Amico talked about the concept of canine guidance. The canine teeth have always been constant in number, position, and alignment in the dental arches and serve to guide the mandible during eccentric movements. Nethologists doubted on bilateral balanced occlusion. Cuspid protection theory, mutually protected system, was adopted by them. And the theory is the anterior teeth protect the posterior teeth in eccentric movements, and conversely have the posterior teeth protect the anterior teeth in maximal intercuspation. And in the 1960s, anterior guidance concept was completed, combining the canine guidance by nephology and incisal guidance by PMS, mutually protected occlusion by nephology and group function by PMS. 
only difference is for canine guidance occlusion during lateral movement, only canines are closed and other teeth are excluded, but in PMS, all teeth can be excluded. They also had a different views on centric relation and maximal intercuspation. The nephologist believed that CR centric relation, the relation between the two jaws, should be the same as the centric occlusion between teeth. They thought CR and CO, which is MI these days, should be the same, and between CR and MI, if there is any difference, they thought it was due to premature contact, but acknowledged their mistake as 90% of natural dentitions have an occlusal prematurity. Now, long centric or freedom in centric concept is accepted more. Freedom to close the mandible either into centric relation or slightly anterior to it without varying the vertical dimension at the anterior teeth. Postal diagram published earlier than that shows CR and MI not coincident. Occlusion for implant prosthesis. Occlusion theories began with the dentures and developed further with the natural tooth restoration. Implant occlusion theories developed with the wide use of implant restorations. There is PDL between natural teeth and bone, but implants are directly attached to bone. It makes a big difference. Preproprioception comes from mechanical receptors in natural teeth, but osteoperception in implants. When force is applied, PDL moves first when it comes to natural teeth, but bone moves when it comes to implants. Lateral force is applied to apical one-third of root surface of natural tooth, but the crest of bone when it comes to implants. For natural teeth, 100 micron of lateral and apical movements are allowed, but for implants, 50 micron of lateral movement and 3 to 5 micron of apical movement. Tactile sensitivity is high in natural teeth but low in implants. Signs of overloading, natural teeth show PDL thickening, frammatus, mobility, wear facet, or pain, but for implants, more mechanical problems occur. Screw loosening, fracture of screw abutment, and implant body and bone loss. Mutually protected occlusion is recommended for both natural dentition and implant prosthesis. The anterior teeth protect the posterior teeth in eccentric movements and conversely have the posterior teeth protect the anterior teeth. The concept of implant protected occlusion is added to control the biomechanical stress to the implant system and maintain long-term stability of the marginal bulk soft tissue and prosthesis. Implant protected occlusion is as follows. Ideal implant position should be determined considering an axial load over the long axis of an implant body generates less overall stress. It should be placed at the center of the tooth to be restored, and the screw should be on the occlusal table. If implant position is not at the center, it is not good. Second, we need to maintain narrow posterior occlusal table. A buckle or lingual cantilever in the posterior results in an offset, which is not good. So 30 to 40 percent reduction in the occlusal table is recommended. So if you reduce the occlusal table, the lateral force is reduced. Third, we need to minimize the cusp inclination. Shallow or monoplane cusp height decreases the force-related complications. It's reported that every 10 degree increase in cusp inclination, a 30% increase in torque. In the picture, if you make the cusp flat, the hazardous factor would be reduced. 
four, no premature contact zone implant prosthesis. Hyperocclusion may cause bone loss or implant failure. Implants are not as sensitive as natural teeth, so when a hazardous force is applied, the patient may not be aware of that. Especially for patients with parafunction, you need to detect and remove the premature contact. Closer contacts should allow for wide freedom of 1 to 1.5 mm in CR. 5. Ideal occlusal contact position for anterior implants. More susceptible to premature contacts because of the horizontal movement of the adjacent teeth. Natural teeth must be utilized as the stress-bearing component to prevent overstressing the implant prosthesis. 6. Ideal occlusal contact position for posterior implant. Occlusal contact position over the center of the implant abutment. Marginal breach contact should be avoided as they create a cantilever and bending moment forces. Occlusal contacts must be positioned at the center of the implant as much as possible for its stability. 7. Cantilever forces need to be minimized. Cantilevers are force magnifiers. Implant positioning, narrowing the occlusal table and concentration of occlusal contacts are paramount. Lastly, mutually protected occlusion is very important. Of course, you should not change the occlusal pattern if a patient is adjusted to it and there is no pathology. However, mutually protected articulation is recommended more than any other occlusal schemes, so this should be considered as important. Summary To stabilize dentures, early concepts of occlusion came up. Differences between nethology and PMS schools when it comes to natural teeth restoration and the agreement on anterior guidance. I also talked about occlusion for implant prosthesis. At this lecture, we talked about basic theories for implant occlusion, early occlusion theories and natural tooth restoration occlusion and implant occlusion schemes that have been discussed. I'll come back with another lecture on implant setting process and how to apply occlusal schemes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.